Yeah. 
your Bibles to Romans chapter 7. We're going to look at another kind of service uh, that we're going to need to take a look at here. You know, as I listen to those songs, as I chose those songs, I thought about how, you know, the Jesus is coming soon and swing, and swing low, sweet chariot. Uh, in the sweet by and by, all referring to that there's going to come a day when we're going to be in God's kingdom. We're not going to be here. We're going to be in God's kingdom and we're going to be uh, in the most perfect place that there is. But until we get to that time, we still got some work to do. And as going through this uh, this whole COVID thing, and however you want to say it, this crazy year that we've had this year, let's put it that way, because uh, there's more than just COVID, there's everything going on. And, it, and you get pulled in one direction, you get pulled in another direction. And <clears throat> we're going to look and see what Paul says about being pulled in two different directions and how we need to handle what when that time comes. Because we are pulled in many directions. And I'm not talking, you know, just uh, crazy things in the world, but I'm talking about everyday life we have decisions to make. Everyday life will get pulled in different directions. Now, I think everyone would agree with me that uh, when you're when you're born and as you're, as you're growing up, you develop your character and, and uh, you are who you are. You have your own personality and that's one person. And then when the time comes and the Lord calls and you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then you are created into another person. So you've got the old person and you got the new person. The old person is the physical person, the uh, this, this flesh and bone and, a, and our will and the things that we want to do. That's the old person. The new person is the spiritual person, the person that Jesus Christ uh, has, has saved. And it's a spiritual walk with Jesus. But, you see, we've got a little problem. And the problem is, the old wants to the, the old person wants to kick in and do the things we used to do, and the new person wants to wants to say, no, you can't do that, so you got this battle back and forth, back and forth. And sometimes it causes a lot of problems in people's lives because they don't know what to do with the battle. You know, I was, I was reading uh, and studying on this scripture, and the, the statement was made that you can never fulfill the law on your own merit. You can't do it. You see, you can, and, and, and I've seen it done, and matter of fact, I've done it myself, I'll just be honest with you. You can make up your mind and say, I am never going to do a certain thing again, and you can go and, and be just as good as you're going to be and try as hard as you want to try and, and put forth every possible effort, and guess what? Sooner or later, you do it again. Not that you wanted to do it. Not that you was looking to do it, but you do it. The reason is, we, when, when this happens is, we're not trusting on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to help us through. We, we're going on our own merit. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you don't have the Spirit of God living within you, then you're going to fail at every point of the law. We'll go back and take a look at the rich young ruler and, you know, when he, when he came to, to Jesus, he said, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he told him to, you know, follow the commandments. He said, oh, I've done that since I was a youth. Meaning that he didn't lie, he didn't commit adultery and, and all these kind of things that, that the Ten Commandments tell us not to do. He honored his, his mother and his father, just like he said. He didn't have any other gods before God. But there was one thing that he lacked. And he didn't realize about himself. And that was the sin of covetousness. You see, he coveted his possessions. And he couldn't turn loose of those things. He just couldn't let them go and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It says that he went away sad. In other words, he went away as an unbeliever. Now, I'm not preaching about material things today. I'm just using that as an example, okay? So Paul is talking about his struggles 
And he's actually using this as a, as a teaching method for someone else, but he's talking about his struggles between the old man and the new man. Now, if anybody's read chapter 7 of Romans, you know it gets all tangled up and wordy, okay? So I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to read verses 18 through 25 and try to uh, skip over some of the way that he paraphrases stuff. But I would encourage you to go home and read chapter 7. And not just chapter 7, because after chapter 7, there's 8. And chapter 8 is a blessing to us. So read chapter 8 also. But in chapter 7, beginning with verse 18. Is that, I forgot to tell you all what verse. Everybody there? Okay, I've seen this carefully at the bottom line. She said she didn't care if I picked on her, so I picked on her. She made that mistake. All right. Chapter 7, verse 18. He says, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would do, I, no, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. It's even hard to read, folks. I mean, it's, it's a tongue twister. Okay? For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now, let me stop right there because I want to explain something. Paul's not saying that he's serving God in his mind and going out and doing all these terrible things with his body. He's talking about he can't serve the Lord in any other way except in the Spirit. In his body, this earthly body that we have, this fleshly body that we have, is drawn to some things uh, that, that we are not, should not be, and are not drawn to through the Spirit. Now, the law, if we go back and we look at the law, and by the way, let me, let me tell you this, we're not saved under the law. No. Not saved by the law. We're saved by Jesus Christ. Through His uh, sacrifice and through the faith in Jesus Christ, by the mercy of God, that's how we're saved. Not through work. But, when you get into that, then you've got to get into this other part. It says faith without works is dead. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, you're going to do good works. Okay? But we're not talking about that so much today as we are about the law and Paul and his uh, battle back and forth between the flesh and the spirit. The law was given for a reason. God gave the law to Moses uh, as a uh, direction for those people to lead their lives. But since Moses' time, now we have Jesus Christ. And our faith in Jesus Christ is what brings us salvation. That doesn't make the law void. The law is there for a reason. To show us the things that we should do. So it's like a mirror. Okay? If you look into the Ten Commandments and you read the Ten Commandments and you apply them to your life, it's like a mirror. It shows us the things in our life that should not be there. In other words, it reveals our sin. And that's what Paul is saying right here. The law reveals our sin. It, it shows us what sinful people we are. And you may be sitting here today and say, well, wait a minute now. I'm a Christian. I'm not a sinful person. Let me tell you something. You're a sinful person. There's two kinds of people. There's lost sinners and saved sinners, but the Scripture says we are all sinners. And he says, if any man says that he's not a sinner, he lies and the truth is not in him. So I don't want you to come out the back door and say, I'm not a sinner. Because if you say that, you're going to be the biggest sinner in him. Okay? So don't come tell me that. The law is just and holy. There's nothing wrong with the law. The law is good. It's just and holy. 
It was given by a just and a holy God for a purpose. It reveals our sins. It shows us our sin. In the scriptures it says it, if, if it had not had the law, I would not have known sin. If there was no law, there was no sin. But there is a law and there is sin. And we can't live up to that law, not in this place and body, because of our own nature. We have a sinful nature. We're born into a sinful world. We have a sinful nature. So we can't live up to the letter of the law. And when you try to live up to the letter of the law, when you, when you try on your own marriage to, to live up to the letter of the law, and you get so tied up in the law, then you try to become what you might call a legalistic Christian. When you can't win salvation, you can't earn salvation if you was there, but if you went by the perfect letter of the law all your life, it still doesn't bring you salvation. Salvation comes through Jesus Christ. So we don't need to be legalistic Christians. What we need to be is faithful, serving Christians. Now the law will reveal to us where we're going wrong. We don't throw the law out. We have the law, but through the, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ, we're forgiven for our sins. And the law does not have us in bondage anymore. And I hope this is making sense to everybody. We have an old nature and a new nature. And the flesh struggles against the spirit. You ever been tempted to do something? You know it's wrong, but you're tempted to do it anyway, right? Mm -hmm. well, there's that struggle right there. You ever had uh, in your mind that, that Satan and his, his little uh, workers that he has in your mind telling you what a bad person you are and ain't no way God can love you and God can't forgive you and, and you know, you're just a worthless person. You ever been in that place in your life? Well, that's the flesh war against the Spirit. Have you ever wanted so bad to, to be as good as you can be, to do the work of God, but something always hinders you from doing it? There's that struggle that we have. But the only way that we're going to get out of that struggle is when we leave this earth. And we're in God's presence and we won't have the struggle anymore. Over in Galatians chapter 3, verses 21 and 24, if y'all want to go there, I give you a minute to get there. Scripture says, verse 21, is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. The law is not against the promises of God, it doesn't work contrary to God. It says, For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily, or verily, righteousness should have been by the law. If it had given a law that it could have given life, then righteousness would have been by the law, but it's not. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Now I read that for a reason this morning. The reason I, that I included that scripture right there was because of the law. I wanted you to see in the scripture where it says that the law is not contrary to God, but that the law does not bring salvation. So, with that being said, um, <clears throat> the one thing that, that we need to remember is this. We should strive to keep the law. But we don't need to get caught up in the law because our salvation comes from Jesus Christ, not by the law. Now, there are things, and, and my daddy told me this a long time ago, and I believe that he's 100% right in this, and he said, you know, everybody draws a line. And they say, I won't go past that line. And some people's lines you can go a little further, and some people's you can't go as far. Everybody draws a line. Well, God drew a line too. And he said, those who believe in my son, Jesus Christ, shall be saved. And those who reject Jesus Christ 
shall be lost. Now that's his line. Our line is different from his line. In Galatians 5, uh, 13 through 18, reads like this. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed of one another. Now, this is the part we want to get to right here in verse 16. Because this is how we are able to live in the law and not under the law through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What happens when we're tempted? What happens when we are drawn away from God for the, the things that, that this world offers and our you know our personal will and wants? Turn us to what you would do, we should walk in the Spirit. How do you walk in the Spirit? What happens when you have those those battles and you're stuck in the middle? And you can't seem to overcome. I wish that I had one hand and put the other song on the, on the uh, music this morning. Because there's a song. And the name of the song is, I pray my way out of trouble. When temptation comes and you're finding it hard to resist, you need to pray your way out of trouble and not fall into this flesh of the world that we live in. We need to walk by the Spirit. It says for the for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So I ask you today, are you led by the spirit? Well, let me tell you, if you're not led by the spirit of Jesus Christ, if the, if the spirit of Jesus Christ, if God's spirit does not dwell within you, then you're lost. Because the scripture tells me that when we're saved, that he sends us the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit and you're trying to live by the law, in other words, what I'm saying, if you're just trying to be a good person and hoping for the best and thinking you're going to slide through the crack and get into God's kingdom, you're deceiving yourself. There's only one way and it is not through the law. It's through the faith in Jesus Christ. Now if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, there is a way to overcome this battle. Of course, if you don't know Jesus, you don't have this battle because you don't have the Spirit. But if you don't know Jesus and you want to overcome this world, uh, in Corinthians it tells us that uh, when Christ died and was resurrected, he defeated death and he defeated the grave. You won't be able to defeat death and defeat the grave. That doesn't mean that you won't die a physical death. We're all going to die. We're going to lay this body down. But the Lord's going to give us a new body. He's going to take us home to be with him if you're Christian. Now, let me go back to what I was saying. If you don't know Jesus Christ, the Lord will say, and you're struggling in this world today, and you feel a draw that says, I've got to do something. I need something more. I need help. I can't do this on my own. When you feel the conviction of all the things that's going on in your life, that's the Holy Spirit convicting you and drawing you to Jesus Christ. And there's only one way that you can win the battle. And that's accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. I'm not talking about in lip service. I'm talking about accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. So that He rules. The Spirit rules. You follow His teachings. You do the things that He would have us to do. And you understand and know that occasionally you're going to do something that God didn't want you to do. But it's going to be all right because it's covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. So you repent, you ask for forgiveness, and you get up and you move forward following Jesus Christ. 
How do I do that, you might ask? I don't know if everybody in here saying, don't know if they're not. How do I do that? Well, it's very simple. When you feel the Lord calling you, you feel that you're under conviction. You know without a shadow of a doubt that you're lost, you've never been saved, and you need a Savior. What you do is you, you turn to the Lord and you ask Him to forgive you of your sins and save your soul. Well, how do I ask Him? You might ask. I can't see. I don't know where He's at. Well, let me tell you where He's at. He's on His throne listening. And you can't see Him, but He's watching you. And He's listening for that sinner's prayer. And when that sinner asks for forgiveness and salvation, guess what? God grants forgiveness and salvation. He imparts it to us. It talks about an adoption. We're adopted into the family of God. And at that point, you become a child of God. And at that point, you also have a responsibility. He says, well, I don't know if I can live up to the responsibility of living a Christian life. Let me tell you something. You accept Jesus Christ. You're a new person. And yes, you're born again. And let me tell you what happens when you're born again. You've got to have another orange blood. You grew physical from the birth to the day that you accept Jesus Christ. Now you're going to grow spiritual. How are you going to do that? You're going to have to walk in the Spirit. Because believe you me, Satan is going to be on your heels every minute of every day trying to drag you down. But God is greater than Satan. Yeah. And he can't drag you down against we're going to have a hymn of limitation. This dance is going to come play a song for us. We're going to stand. And if there's someone here today who doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you can change that today. All you have to do is not just ask, but put your faith in Jesus Christ. Believe. Because what you ask for is going to be granted to you. Believe in that Jesus is the Son of God, and He died, and that God raised Him to the dead. <clears throat> and believe in the promises of God, Satan, and if you put your trust and your faith in Jesus Christ, He's going to raise you from the dead too. And if you don't believe that, there ain't no point in asking for If you don't believe that, then I don't know what to tell you. Other than get your scripture down and read it. Or pray. But it's more to you. Because God is real. God is alive. Satan is real. Satan is alive, and guess what? You're real, and you're alive. You've got some decisions to make, some actions to take, some days to take.